Hey, welcome back. You know, this might seem like an odd topic for this channel, but really it's not. Because, you see, some of my favorite characters that I have ever played, they were kind of an anti-hero. You know, they were the kind of character that tried hard to do what they, what they felt was the right thing. And, you know, whether or not society agreed with them, that was completely irrelevant to my character. Now, that doesn't mean that my character was a bad party member. He chose to be with these people, after all. He supported them in the best way that he could. But it did mean that if, in his judgment, something wasn't the way he wanted in the world around him, he had no problem breaking any law or moral code to make the changes that he thought was the correct change. Even though many people in society, even the party themselves, might not have agreed with them. In this new series, I'm going to talk about how to set up and run an evil Dungeons & Dragons campaign without, shall we say, being obnoxious? Perhaps the f most powerful evil out there is the lawful evil kingdoms or nations. You know, these aren't necessarily uh, bad people that live there. They're maybe good people that live there, but those good people, they kind of cringe away in their homes you know, well, sadists, they march through the streets doing what they will. But those good people, they're fed, they're kept entertained, and so they are not inconvenienced at all, and it's somebody else's problem. So it's easy for them to ignore the blight. You know, they are good after all, but they just can't be bothered. They have their freedom, and as long as they follow the laws, they're going to be fine, no matter how terrible those laws might be. Of course, the opposite side of the coin, chaotic evil, those people live without fear of any consequences, any kind of consequences. If they get hurt, they seek vengeance without any fear of retribution. Even if retribution comes, they don't really fear it. Now, this is because they're either very powerful or they've been simply taken to a place psychologically, mentally, society, the whole entire society has been taken to this place, they just don't care any longer. You know, they understand that there are just two types of people in the world, the hunter and the hunted. And, you know, sometimes seeing fear in your prey's eyes, that's just an added perk. In their point of view. Of course, the other D&D evil is neutral evil. Now, neutral evil just doesn't care, as long as they stay in power. They know that the world doesn't care about them, so why should they care about the world? You know, they're not going to take care of their neighbor. They're not going to care if laws are just. The only person they're looking out for is, number one, themselves. Now, this was likely a hard lesson that they learned. It might have been drilled into them by somebody else, by society, or however they learned it. They learned that there is one and only one person that's really important in the world, and that's number one. You know, and it's also a lesson you're going to be very happy to teach anybody they consider lesser to them. And, of course, in their worldview, everybody is lesser to them. Um, of course, you know, there are several subtle shades between these three alignments, and many people that fall within those alignments, they think they're doing good. After all, few people actually consider themselves to be evil in their actions, because they can always justify themselves. I, you know, as my own personal opinion, I doubt that even the Joker from Batman would consider himself evil. Instead, he has goals he wants to accomplish, and, you know, he is seeking vengeance, but in his worldview, that is a totally rational thing to do. Evil is somewhat defined from the perspective of both the person and the society that they live within. So, it's a fine line between being heroically good in some form of evil, because after all, aren't most adventuring parties and really a form of evil too? From the perspective of the goblins whose cave they just invaded, at least they probably are. Now, but back to discussing how I play evil characters. I have a few rules for my characters so they don't hurt the party, um, mess with the party, and more importantly, they don't anger the people that I'm actually playing with, you know, those people who so graciously wanted to spend time with me and me with them so we could play this, this game together. 
So, first and foremost, my character will never do combat with any other party member. And my second rule is that they won't steal from other party members. And finally, they can usually be counted on in combat, as long as the odds aren't too overwhelming. And in my uh, you know, character's opinion, a retreat would be a uh, thing to do. Another thing I do is I really try to develop some, just some kind of panache that makes the character likable. Other courses vary from character to character. And if the character concept that I come up with just isn't working, I, you know, work it over with the DM or talk it over with the DM. And that character can be retired. He can be killed. He can be left behind, whatever. And I just introduce a new character. You know, new characters are easy to roll up. And, you know, I especially do this if I find that that character is becoming a little too tiring or uncontrollable or just, you know, the the people, the, once again, the people I'm playing with just aren't really enjoying that character concept. I'm happy just to get rid of it and, and try something else. Maybe it's the same character, different personality. You know, because sometimes those evil characters or methods can just be uh, too appalling for the good aligned characters. Of course. Sometimes those hypocritical party members choose to turn a blind eye when my character has to deal with an NPC in an expeditious manner. You know, on reflection, perhaps those party members weren't as good as they claimed they were after all. Perhaps next time they will join in without remorse. My character could find out. But anyway, at the end of the day, sometimes my evil character will do the right thing because it's in his own best interest. After all, even Skeletor helped He-Man when Eternia was threatened, and it took both of them to destroy some meteor or asteroid or something. Well, <laughs> thanks for taking a look. As I mentioned, this is part of an ongoing series, and I will post the link to the playlist down in the, the description below. Catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.